Hi everyone, I'm out in the front garden today and I am finishing off some more bulb planting. Last week I was planting my narcissi in the flower beds up in the top flower patch but this week I'm going to be planting some pheasant's eye daffodils down in the front lawn trying to get them to naturalise over the years. And it's a really nice thing to do if you have got a good area of lawn you can plant in. You can plant narcissa, you can plant chlorocuses, snowdrops, it can put on a really lovely display in the spring. And if you naturalise your bulbs in the lawn they'll gradually increase in number over the years and that just means your display becomes more full and it looks more beautiful. You need to choose an area of the garden that you want to plant your bulbs into. And what I'm doing today is I'm concentrating on a bottom area of our garden. So we have a big lawn and round the edges of the lawn we've got some trees and we've got some rhododendron bushes. And it's in this area down by the rhododendron bushes that I'm going to be planting my bulbs. I want them to be in an area of the garden where you can still cut the main grass in the springtime when it gets growing and you don't want it to have lots of foliage on your spring bulbs that you're having to leave to die back and get that energy in. It could look quite tatty in your middle of your front lawn. So I'm going for the edges where we keep it slightly wilder in the garden and that way we can cut the main grass, we can enjoy the nice spring flowers at the bottom and then when we've got the tatty foliage on them dying back to give energy for next year's bulbs the rhododendrons will be coming into flower and they'll distract away from that and it's also an area where we don't put the soot on lawn more quite so much we keep it a little bit wilder so that means that we can allow that foliage the time to die back naturally if you cut the foliage on the bulbs too early once they've flowered to neaten things up in the garden then the bulbs don't get the energy they need for the following year's flowers so I'll show you that just now, the areas of the garden that we do plant the bulbs. So we have this main area of lawn in our garden. I've got the flower patches on either side, one there and another flower patch there. And this main area we want to keep clear of bulbs so that we can cut it and keep it looking neat in the growing season with the lawnmower. But down this area of the garden, where we have got the rhododendron bushes, this is where it tends to be slightly wilder and um, the lawn more just cuts paths through and we have some of the grass longer in the growing season. And for the past few years I have been adding more and more bulbs to this area down the front. So every year there will be an increased display which is really beautiful. So what I've been doing is I've been lifting snowdrop clumps from other areas of the garden, splitting them up and planting them here. And I've also been adding some different varieties of narcissi every year. So I've added some cheerfulness, Winston Churchill in here already. And this year I'm going to add some pheasants eye because they are later flowering in May and that'll keep the display going for longer. And it's just a good area of the garden where there is not so much um, going on early in the season. So when you look down from the house, it's nice to be able to see some flowers down here because the rhododendron bushes are still very green at that stage and the flowers haven't come. So by planting here, we get a display right the way through. We get that lovely spring flowers in April and early May, and then that goes straight into the rhododendrons flowering for a few weeks and can look really pretty. So one of the easiest ways to plant your bulbs is just to do it singly if you don't have very many at all. You can just take one of your bulb planters or a small trowel, dig up a little bit of your lawn, deep enough that it's about two to three times the depth of your bulb, pop it in and then put your soil plug with the turf back on on top, press it down and give it a water. That's absolutely fine. But I've got too many bulbs to do that. I need an easier way to do it. So I'll show you how I do that in a minute. If you have just a small number of bulbs though and you want to plant them, make sure that you do it in a natural way so that it looks really nice in your garden. And the easiest way to do that is just to take a handful of your bulbs like this and literally you just want to throw them. So I've just tossed them on the ground there and they have all landed higgledy piggledy but if I plant them where they have landed then that will create quite a natural look to your bulb planting. They won't look like they have been planted there on purpose whereas if you plant them in rows or little squares then it looks very much artificial really and um, you're wanting it to kind of just blend in with the landscape look like the bulbs have always been there and create a natural environment when they bloom in the springtime. 
So what I'm going to do just now is I'm going to take my spade here and I am going to be digging an H in the lawn and basically that just means that you are putting your spade in and you are digging down in one line, dig down in another line and then dig across to make that H shape and then we fold back the bits of turf on either side, we plant the bulbs underneath then we put the turf back on. So I'll show you that just now. I'm just marking out another H here. This is going to hopefully look quite pretty because it's beside a bench that we sit on in the garden to have cups of tea. So it might be nice to have some spring flowers round about it when you're first able to sit out in the garden and feel some sun in April time. So that's the two parallel lines and then just down the middle to make that H. So hopefully here you should be able to see what I've just done. I have made the letter H by making an incision with my spade, nice long line down one side, another long line down the other side, and then one across the middle. And I should be able to peel that turf back just now and plant my bulbs. And then you should be able to put your spade underneath and just lift that side of the turf up and fold it back. And then do the same at the other side. Put the spade underneath and lift the turf back. And then I just loosen the soil in the trench that I've already made for the bulbs to sit in and put the roots down. Make sure there's no large stones in there and then it's ready to pop the bulbs in. So this is what it looks like when you peel those layers of turf back. So you've got a nice area there to plant your bulbs in and then we can just lay the turf back over. So I've popped the bulbs in, spaced them out and put them in so that they're not too uniform, not in straight lines, so they'll look nice when they come up. Pointy edge is facing up and the roots facing down. And now they're ready to get covered up with the turf again. You can just lay the turf back on like that. Then we want to press down with our bits, get it to go back down nice and firmly. The last thing you're going to want to do is to give the turf a water so that it settles back down and grows in again and the grass will look very quickly like you have never planted anything there. And in the springtime you'll get a really nice display of bulbs coming up. So this morning I've decided to be a bit more efficient. I have dug lots of my H-shaped trenches to put my bulbs in and I thought I'd dig all the trenches first and then I would bring the bulbs down and pop them all in at the same time and then put the turf back over. And that might be a little bit quicker way to do it. But you can see I've just dotted them around areas in the lawn close to the rhododendrons and close to where I've already started naturalizing bulbs in previous years. So there should be a really nice display here in the springtime. One of the really nice things about naturalizing bulbs in your lawn is that you are really doing it for future generations as much as yourself. These bulbs will last for years and years and years in the lawn and they'll go on and multiply and create even better displays every year. And we're really just the custodians of this house and garden and we look after it while we live in it and then somebody else will come along and they'll enjoy it. So it's exciting to think that years down the line there might be somebody living here that will really enjoy this display of spring flowers down the bottom of the garden. Hattie's decided to come along and try and help. I'm not sure that this is going to be so good for our lawn though. Thanks very much for watching this week's video on naturalizing bulbs in your lawn areas. Um, I hope you have fun trying to get a nice display in your gardens doing this too. And mix it up, use some crocuses, some snowdrops, some narcissi and you'll get a really nice display.
Next week I'm going to be hopefully doing some tulip planting in the beds in the garden if it's cold enough and also I will be, fingers crossed, lifting the dahlias and getting them stored for winter. It's really late doing that this year because we just haven't had any runs of proper frost at all at the moment and they're just still hanging on in there but I really need to get them lifted and stored so that I can move on to making Christmas wreaths. But we'll wait and see and as soon as I am ready to go on that then I will do a video for you showing what I do. Have a good week. Hattie. Time for lunch Hattie. Now we've got all those bulbs in.